Halloween time has officially begun at the Disneyland Resort, so we're going to be walking you through what that means in this episode of the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged. This is the Diz Unplugged Disneyland Edition, episode 744 for the week of September 17th, 2018. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect vacation. Visit them on the web at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to our show. I hope you're in a spooky mood today because I am... Uh, just definitely in one. So um, to join me for today's episode, I am your host, Rhino Clav, and we've got from all the way from uh, Southern California, Katrina Manzoni. Hello. And Tyler Crouch. Hey, everyone. And helping us make this episode happen with the uh, the witch in the back, Craig Williams. <laughs> Hi. The witch is back. <laughs> My favorite Elton John song. Well, um, we're just going to dive right into it today. Halloween time at the Disneyland Resort has officially begun. It started September 7th of this year, 2018, and it will be running through October 31st. Tyler and Katrina, because they are located in Southern California, were lucky enough to be able to go and check out some of the decorations and offerings that are happening this year. Um, I am super excited, but um, for those of you, as we've said before, this Disneyland edition of the Dis Unplugged is geared toward people that maybe aren't locals, but travelers that are trying to get there with also the locals as well we're not excluding you guys but we just want you to keep that perspective in there and i, I was gonna say nancy would disagree with you yes i know i was gonna say nancy <laughs> called me out on that last week nancy nancy um but um but i i just thought i realized that um in this newer version of the Diz unplugged of the disneyland edition that we haven't really gone through all of the offerings that are the Halloween time at Disneyland Resort. And with your two parks, you guys have quite a bit to offer uh, people who love Halloween like myself, you know? Yeah, definitely. That's um, true. It's, I mean, they, the, the nice thing about our parks out here is they just deck them out with all sorts of decorations. I mean, there's stuff everywhere to look at. Um, well, you know, I mean, mostly in like Main Street, Buena Vista Street, and a little bit in Cars Land. But what I mean by that is just like a lot of times you can go to a park in Disney World and it doesn't necessarily feel super Halloween-y besides, uh, you know, Magic Kingdom, really. That so. is absolutely, I agree with you. That is one of the things here. Halloween is my favorite um, season, followed very closely by uh, the Christmas season. But um, you don't really see a lot of Halloween um, decorations um, here other than Main Street at the Magic Kingdom. Um, you know, a little bit, you get Fort Wilderness that kind of decks it out there, but that's up to like the guests to do that. But um, regardless about Disney World, we're talking about Disneyland. So um, why don't we start and we'll walk you through. We're going to start at Disney's California Adventure. So one of my favorite things that they have there is that they put up this time of year is the big tortilla uh, shell that's out front that has Oogie Boogie <laughs> in front of it. Yes, I know it is supposed to be the moon and not the tortilla. He loves Mexican food. Yes, he sure does, that guy. Uh, bugs and Mexican food. He's just a, a man of unusual taste i don't know um a variety of tastes is what i should say but um no i just i really love that um i don't want to say facade what would you call that that decoration that accent that park enhancement if you will um yeah yeah it, I, it just, for me, it's really cool. It's a very cool visual out there, and it really gets a, you know, there's a, if you haven't seen it, there's a little animated, um, like, commercial that's been on social media, and it's on the official Disneyland.com um, website where it's, uh, you know, Oogie Boogie is casting the spell of Halloween time on the Disneyland Resort, and I, I think it's a cute little thing because all the bats swirl around Mater and when he puts on his costume and, <laughs> and everything, but, um, okay, so, well, so when oh, you walk into... California Adventure, you've got um, right away you're greeted with some seasonal decorations on Buena Vista Street. So, um, Tyler and Katrina, do you guys want to talk about that? Sure. Did you, do you want to talk about So, um, yeah, the the main thing here is that uh, it, it's, very, it, it's very spooky compared to Disneyland. So when you walk in, they're kind of trying to position this more as the kind of more adult Halloween mm -hmm. uh, decorations, and it has a lot of purples, a lot of bats, and I'm not sure if they're going to 
do this this year, but last year they kind of slowly added bats throughout the month um, be- to symbolize like Oogie Boogie taking over Buena Vista Street. So right now the the banners and stuff are slightly sparse, but I think as the month goes on, um, they're going to be adding more and more. But the really cool thing is like all the different windows that we talked about in like the last episode, mm-hmm. which are just um, decorated so nicely with like all these like very spooky but also like i don't know like goofy but spooky at the same time uh just like kind of cartoony things like a like a clown almost you know how a clown is supposed to be funny but sometimes you look at him and you're like that guy's kind of creepy no no uh, clowns are terrifying <laughs> that's kind of how i feel about a lot of the decorations here at california adventure um but the main thing that everybody needs to see is the headless horseman uh which is it's a big giant statue, basically right outside of Elias and Company, and it is like really cool. And you definitely want to see it at night. Um, they do this whole thing at dusk, um, similar to what they do at Cars Land, which is the the is that Oogie Boogie comes on the the uh, the speaker and starts you know taking over the park basically, and then the music changes from the nice little happy go lucky daytime stuff to the you know, nighttime. They've actually got a lot of Beetlejuice music and like Danny Elfman stuff, which is really interesting to hear in a Disney park. Did, um, but, was that Headless Horseman statue? Was that new last year? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, last year was the first year that they ever decorated Buena Vista street at, at all. Really? Oh, really? So, okay. Yeah. So this, this is, so this is the second year they've been doing all this, but the, they had the Headless Horseman last year, but the cool new thing that they're doing this year with the Headless Horseman is they've added an entire new lighting package and they've also added tons of sound effects. And so there's like a little kind of 10 minute loop that it does. And I, I was lucky enough, I was taking pictures of the Headless Horseman and the director of the, of the lighting and everything of that area came up to me and was like, oh, can you just show me your pictures real quick? I just want to see how it's, uh, how it's how coming it's, out, how it's playing and how it's coming out and stuff. And I asked him, I was like, is this like all, like all this lighting and everything is new, right? He's like, yeah. So every 10 minutes, um, there, the trees light on fire and you can oh. hear the headless horseman, like kind of do a lap around the area. You can hear it. Like, uh, you can hear the, like, like the, 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 the of footsteps. The horse. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And his face turns green and he laughs and, uh, the entire time smoke is billowing out of the horse's nostrils. Yeah, I saw that. That looked really cool. Yeah, and it's just, it's actually really cool because not only does the fire happen around the trees, but there's like little lightning effects, things like that. So that is a cool place to hang out, get a photo, like maybe grab a snack and kind of watch the little 10-minute uh, thing hap- kind of unfold because, I don't know, it's really cool. Um, did you have any favorite things about the Buena Vista Street Halloween or... There was this like I, I like I know you have probably have a picture like a video, but it's in uh, one of the videos Tyler did for like kind of like a the whole decorations of Disney California Adventure, but just one display like kind of what he was talking about. It's it's like has like a cool 1920s vibe, like 1930s, but it has it's like the displays are like eerie, and then there's like a cat, and it's like missing its head, like part of his head, so like the brain's coming out, and like, oh, but it's like classy. It, it, I don't know, it's, it's weird. It's, it sounds kind of gross. It sounds She's mortified. Totally kind of gross yeah. with like paper mache. <laughs> it's paper mache, but it's really cute. Anyway, besides that, uh, uh, like near Elias and Co, there are window displays. Uh, like kind of Nancy talked about, it's Mickey, and there's like he's kind of like scared because it's like oh, like the house is haunted, and there's like ghosts coming in and out, and then. So there's like three displays, and then each one like is a different. I guess like well, I, I can't. Some really of them they're are like silly. the motion like windows. The 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 I don't know the word for those windows. That the the they're like you know the ones that they're tell animated the windows. Animated windows. Animated yeah. windows. Yeah, there we go. And they're, Craig. and they're kind of based. A couple of them I think are based on silly symphonies. So it's pretty cool to see those pop up. Uh, and it's like Mickey in black and white. So it's very neat. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, it fits in with that aesthetic and time period that the park is going for. So there's. Those were like one of my favorite things last year, and they do uh, they do a similar style in Christmas with some of their Christmas windows too, and so I I think it's where they excel. But that I'm very happy to hear about the headless horseman because last year while it was cool to see it, I felt it was underwhelming. Mm-hmm. It essentially was okay. Well, I'm gonna take a picture of it. I'm gonna get my picture with it, and <laughs> that's it. It's yeah, a statue. Right. So to hear that they've made it 
an event now that's that's very very intriguing i mean because it is it is a really awesome piece like it is like i love where they put it you know in that um little rotunda area and i just i i don't know like i i really want to see that full full-on show that sounds like something where i'm like oh i need to experience that for myself you know yeah. i mean i watch the video and stuff but it's really cool that- but i do i do really love that that feel of halloween on buena vista street i feel like um you know the window displays which i always feel like are sometimes a little underappreciated like they're like what you said they're a little more mature you know they've got skeletons in there you know they've got mickey with ghosts and stuff and it's a little more like ooh, you know i it's very consistent but you can also meet some characters on in buena vista street as well right that are in their uh in their outfits yeah. so goofy is in like a kind of like a makeshift ghost costume and mickey has his like little bat costume on and what is Minnie? She's Minnie just is, is like a 1920s flapper. Oh, okay. So she has so she, she has really like a little much. headband on. <laughs> she has kind of her flapper costume, almost like um, what you'd think she'd be wearing during the day in that area. But yeah, yeah. So she kind of like <laughs> sort like of a little head, yeah. like a little like a headdress on, kind of in a way that yeah. has like a weird half moon. But uh, Donald also has a vampire costume. I and, love Donald's is my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, and then Daisy. Oh, I'm blanking on Daisy because she wasn't out that much when we were there. Uh, yeah, I didn't really. I didn't. That's see all right. Her Nobody likes Daisy. But she does have a costume. But they most of them meet over by Carthay Circle. Like Mickey and Minnie kind of hang out over by like Elias and Co. And then Goofy and Daisy kind of hang out over by Carthay Circle. And then even Carthay Circle is decorated to be like really cool. Like bats are flying out of the Carthay Circle love that, area, yeah. and the lighting is so much better. I feel like than last year. So you can actually take like really good pictures. Yeah. That's the, that's Is that the, me? I don't know. I no, noticed it's that it true, changed but, better. But, like, but I feel like the cool thing about Buena Vista Street is, like, if you really want to take it in... I, okay, I'll say this. Like, Buena Vista Street is kind of cooler at night, Halloween decoration-wise. Like, you want to see it at night, whereas I think, actually, Disneyland is better during the day. Yeah. Um, well, that's a good way to that's a good way to look at it, because I feel like Buena Vista Street and, you know, uh, right outside of Carthay and everything, they have those like trees that are all glowing purple, you know, exactly. so it's like you're not getting the full effect until it is nighttime. Like it'll be cool and you can appreciate the windows during the day. But I feel like it's got that it's got a, it. It. I don't, it like beckons me in, you know, it, like it's yeah. you, like, come on in for this Halloween stuff, you know? So, um, well, the, the really neat thing about it is like at nighttime, that's when it's like you said, they light the trees up and every single ambient light is like, you know, a Halloween color. There's a lot of orange, there's a lot of green and purple. And then, uh, even like the different, uh, we talked about the windows on the, on the, on the street, but even like in the second floor, all the windows are like lit up different colors. They're like green and red. And, you know, so it, it's really something that really comes alive at night, especially when, like I said earlier, there's at, when you at first glance, it doesn't seem like there's that much, but there really is. Yeah. So, well, let's instead of jumping into our next area that we're going to talk about that we've been decorated, we're going to take a left. We're going to go past Carthay. You know, and I want to go down over to the Collector's Fortress over there and talk about Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Mission Breakout, Monsters After Dark. Um, Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so what's really cool about Monsters After Dark is um, it is the sequel. It is a literal sequel to uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Mission Breakout. So when what I mean by that is you go in there and it takes place directly after... Spoiler alert, they, the, the Guardians escape during Mission Breakout. So this takes place directly after Mission Breakout, where Rocket realizes that Groot isn't with them, and he needs to go back and save Groot. So now it's a mission to save Groot. And the thing is, is to escape, they shut down the entire fortress. They blew up the power supply, and they shut it all down. So now all the monsters and everything that the Collector... Um, that the collector had uh, been collecting have all escaped. So that's why they call it Monsters After Dark. Yeah. Because one, of my fa- is one of my favorite things about this, too, is so if you're there during the day, it's not Monsters After Dark overlaid the entire time, like Haunted Mansion Holiday, Stays Haunted Mansion Holiday. It's it's regular Guardians of the Galaxy mission breakout until about like 5 p.m., right? And then it closes right. and does this switchover. So you can ride it once during the day to to get that 
that regular Guardians of the Galaxy experience and then come back. And it, it, like what Tyler was talking about, too, is I just I love that it's it's the sequel. And I love that, like, you go into the queue and the video in the queue is like they're all running around as security cameras that are and it's cutting in and out of the video from from the earlier in the day video where it's uh, it's it's the it, the collector talking about his collection and like it's just all red lights and like none of the uh the hand scanners are working correctly and even rocket he, um has his own has a whole new like for those of you who don't know Gar there's a, a rocket raccoon um uh animatronic in the attraction and he's got a whole new speech and thing that he goes through and it's just a really cool experience and then on top of that it's got a, a a song that was written by Tyler Bates, Bates and it w called "Monsters After Dark," which is the 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 um the song you're gonna get when you get on the attraction. But well, uh, and he was the composer for the music. That's right. Uh, yeah. The score of Guardians of the Galaxies Volume One and Two, and uh, so it it fits right in perfectly with all that. But that's that's where it's a highlight for me. I I do enjoy Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, but unless you're in the front row of the car, you're not going to hear anything happening because everyone's screaming and being loud. Granted, that's the storyline of the ride. <laughs> so it makes sense. But it's like when the music is such an important aspect, as well as what they're saying, you can't hear anything. It's yeah. just a lot of noise with monsters after dark, having the, the score replaced instead of, instead of the music. I feel like it just, it, it, it comes together a little bit more fluidly, but you know, that's that's just my opinion on it. So you, uh, they're you, both great. I, I prefer Monsters After Dark, honestly. You get more, you get the complete story a lot faster, I think, because it's more like uh, you don't have to ride Monsters After Dark 15 times. Like sometimes, like I always say to people after Guardians of the Galaxy, oh, what song did you get? And they're like, I cannot remember. I had a great time, but I can't remember. But this kind of, <laughs> it's like what Craig says, it brings us together. My favorite thing about this, though, is so there's always those Easter eggs in there. One of the monsters that is loose is if you have now seen Thor Ragnarok, which you would not have last year when they first started doing um, uh, uh, Monsters After Dark. Uh, the monster, it, there's a uh, dragon. It, it looks like a dragon. I don't know if it is a dragon, but it's the dr the dragon, we'll call Demon it. Demon dragon. From the beginning of Ragnarok that Thor drops his hammer in the mouth of and he cuts the head off and um yeah. but yeah no, so mean, that's in the attraction but that was really cool to be able to like go on that attraction and see that before the movie came out you know that was that was really neat i love that yeah. that intertwining story that they've got there and but the, the really cool thing one of my favorite little touches that they do as well is even the cast members have different costumes at night like mm -hmm. they're wearing costumes that are like ripped apart kind of ripped to shreds a little bit they look like they've been they've been through something. They've back. got the safety vests on and stuff too, yeah, you know, and, and like and they'll even and I've even seen cast members like you know act like oh what are you guys doing here we got to get out of here like they're you know they're 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 playing like the the place is really about to fall over you know and something we you know you briefly touched on the lighting package in the ride and stuff but the coolest part to me about the lighting package is that they redo the entire outside so that so usually yeah. usually regularly the Guardians uh, or the Guardians, the uh, the Collector's Fortress is you know very green, kind of blue a little bit. But during Halloween time, it has a lot of reds. The lights are flashing all over it, and yeah. they even have these laser projectors that they put onto the outside of the building. And the late and the laser projectors, you know, will show like little sparks and stuff coming off the building, and show it all shutting down. So to me, that's really cool stuff. That's one of my they favorite keep touches. It all year round. I think it looks yeah. better during Halloween. I agree. Halloween, I, I I actually like went to look for it the first time I went after that to like go at night and see the the see the attraction make the transformation from day to night. And it's cooler to watch it at Halloween that, or the ho during Halloween time. But um, well, that'll move us on over to um, you know a big deal that started last year as well, which was the uh, Cars Land um, Halloween overlay, which is I think pretty detailed and impressive. So um, what what do you guys think of that area? I love it. It's it, I I really appreciate that they actually decorated that whole area for Halloween and they put so much time into it because you're kind of like going into you're seeing a lot of, I don't know, like purples and blacks and stuff, like when you're entering Cars Land, but then all of a sudden you just jump in to this like whole new world where they use, you know, all car parts to like make spiders and like they use the cones to make like teeth and or like the barrels uh, look like the jack-o-lanterns they've got like the cutout eyes and the mouth and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like they added 
a couple new things this year compared to last year. I think they added more and more. But, you know, their Mater's Junkyard Jamboree is completely revamped to be, like, Halloween-themed. And the I don't know how many original songs they have. Yeah, it, they oh, call boo-ree. it Graveyard Jamboree. Boo-ree. <laughs> but you, and uh, I like that you can get a little – the little uh, – the little guy, the little hauler, the guy who's pulling you around that okay. that you can get. I don't know why I'm doing this. He's not this small. He's real size. And um, but the where you can get a photo op with him. Normally, he's a mummy version of himself. And exactly. I like that. Yeah, yeah, and we should say mummy. so what um, Cars Land has done. I don't know how often they've been doing it, but it's become like a staple is at the uh, Welcome to Cars Land, the, the billboard out front that welcomes you to the land. They've got the little spoopy witch car. Yeah, and yeah. they're actually selling it this year. Yeah, they have a little plush that they're they selling. They have a plush they're oh, selling I think this I need year. That. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I need it's that actually that. pretty cool. Uh, and that, that there's like a little story behind that witch car actually, because it was actually created uh, by Luigi and Guido. Oh and really? If you yeah, and if you go on the uh, Luigi's uh, oh gosh, what do they call it during Halloween? Uh, uh, well, the Relic and Roadsters. Yeah. Um, but. I can't. I'm blanking on what they call it. Oh yeah, Honkin', Honkin Halloween. Honkin, Honkin if Halloween. Go, yeah. If, yeah. If you go on Luigi, one of the songs that he sings is actually a song about him and Guido building the the witch. So oh, it's kind of cool. Yeah, cool. it's kind of cool that they like put that story together with uh, one of the rides. But I mean, I I think that Cars Land, as a whole, is one of the most amazing places for Halloween, because it's a bunch of stuff you're never gonna find anywhere there's like no halloween decorations that look anything like this this is like completely unique thing oh no yeah 100 percent. because i I love like even the pumpkin patches like the the canisters like the gas canisters with like the green on top and you're like yeah man and what's really really uh, cool about it is that it feels like it it exists within this world there is no movie in there's no cars movie where there is a halloween season but it looks like that attention to detail has been pulled from somewhere, and you're like, this is great imagineering, you know? Yeah, I mean, honestly, everything that you see there is just amazingly clever, uh, down to the port, down to the part where they have uh, it over in the Cozy Cone Motel. If you look in the lobby, there is a chocolate model. It's not, it's not real chocolate spoilers, but uh, it's it's a chocolate model of the Breaks Motel. So yeah, if you want to go and see the Psycho House made out of chocolate in the cars world it's actually very cool it's it's got norman bates there and um what's her name norman breaks yeah norman breaks whatever i guess her name i guess his name is norman <laughs> breaks yeah um but uh you know the woman who gets brutally uh stabbed to death in the movie and everything is there too so what's mary marion is that her name marion anyway yeah uh, so anyway, that, that's a great little detail. Um, and you know, this year though, they didn't put up, I know your question last episode was that they put up the faces on the cones. And when we were there on Friday, they hadn't done that yet. So <laughs> I don't know if they're going to do it this oh, year. I, d- I did notice that they had to repaint those cones after they did those decorations. Last well, they've year. got the one on the lawn in the front. Looks like it's got the face cut out of it, right? The... Oh, it uh, uh, those do. Yeah. Those definitely have like their faces cut out, but they didn't put the, they, they didn't, didn't put, put them on the... the snack one. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't put them on each cone this year, unfortunately so far. Uh, well, what, that was on Friday. Yeah. One of the other good things that you can do over there um, while you're there is you can meet um, Tomater McQueen and and I want to say there's, there's a third. Okay, Red comes out in a Halloween costume too. And then also they have DJ. DJ comes out too. He's a he's a he's a uh, a, a punk rocker, but he calls himself a trunk rocker. He's but he's awful. he's not in costume though, is he? He is. He is. Oh, he, he does. What's he wearing? Yeah. Do you know what he's wearing? A punk. He's yeah. a punk. He's oh, a trunk I punk. thought that's who he was normally. Okay, I no, think you. Were, no. DJ. I, I believe Rhino was watching me shake my head. It wasn't because the information was incorrect it was because i hate dj yeah, i hate everything about I mean. dj I got confused. it's like it, every like i love red i love i love lightning i love tomater and then there's dj which is just this big obnoxious igno- blah, obnoxious <laughs> mess that rolls through and is just loud and i don't like people telling me get, get off the streets i know they do that for all of them but it feels like the people with DJ are always like 10 times more I feel intense. like it's because they're doing it to you in like a dance fashion. They'll do a spin and be like, out of the way. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> um, Can you do that again for me? Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> um, but 
I I just love I, I love like even here in Cars Lands, it's just like you got to look in the windows and stuff. The attention to detail with the decorations is amazing. Like the chains that are supposed to be the spider webs. You've got the spider car character things that are outside of flows, and it just I I yeah. the sugar skull car. I love that little guy. Um, and yeah. I like the pumpkins that are shaped out of like tires. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's pumpkin just pumpkin Halloween. It's it's I just I I love it. There's some featured snacks over there, but we'll get to that in a, in a little bit here. But um, and there's then there's the uh, a friend right uh, that has um, the yeah, Doc Hudson. Yeah, Doc. that that's that was I feel like that's a really cool. I love that. I love that touch. You know, that that is one of my favorite things, and that's that's it's really cool that they even want to do that because they get rid of an area for merchandise. <laughs> you know, they like they have to close off an area, so it's cool that they do that because it is kind of one of the most touching things you've ever seen. And to me, like it's more touching than like anything you see in any of the cars movies, even. So. But then he's alive inside radiator Springs racers. Yeah, it's true. I mean, yeah, one really of the is, racers but... didn't fare well and ran into him. It was a car. <laughs> they could be dressed up as like doc Hudson yeah. in the Ray. Well, trust me. I, I still love, I love the detail of them putting that in there. It's just, it does, it's like it. I hate when lands do that when it's like, okay, well this character, we're setting up this shrine to him because he's dead. Two different times. But then you can go see him right there. It's like, okay, well that's just killing it a well, little bit. Well, they do the same thing with like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy where you can go and meet full size Groot outside and then inside he's a little baby still. So. I, and I will complain about that for ages and ages. <laughs> I don't like timeline messing up. Well, it's cool. It, it, it really is like it it is the way Cars Land is decorated the way that I wish like all Disney areas were decorated for Halloween. I don't I don't even feel like we have anything on the scale to that to to compare it to at, at Disney World. Uh, I love that even like little Stanley's got his little witch hat on and everything like that. Stanley. Wait. Yeah. Stanley. Right. Stanley's name of the founder of Radiator Springs. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Stanley. See, I always I second guess myself sometimes and I know things I drink and I know <laughs> things. Um, so I just, you know, you, you really have to check it out. Um, and then, but that's not it. That's not all the areas that you can see stuff in either. Right. Because we, if you keep moving around to the back of the park, you've got the Plaza de Familia area. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that area is dedicated to like kind of Coco. And then there's like going to be a show that kind of tells the story of the movie Coco and Miguel come or well like they have the mariachi divas come out and their faces are painted. I I adore this. And yeah, then it's called the musical celebration of Coco. Didn't they there have like come. Coco puppets or something like that? They, they were like on well, in front of them. So or this something? year it was they they introduced the show last year and this year was the first year they had the Miguel kind of. I want to say he's almost like a marionette. If you've seen Marionette's a better word. Frozen yeah. at the, marionette. If you've seen Frozen at the Hyperion, it's a lot like the Olaf the Olaf uh, puppet that they have. Uh, but he's kind of he kind of looks like he's made of paper mache. Like um, I don't know, it, it, it's cute in a way, and it and it also is kind of creepy looking. Like <laughs> I agree with Katrina. It's 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 interesting though because they did change the show slightly to put Miguel's. Uh, lyrics in there and stuff uh, and so you know the kid that plays Miguel is actually singing during the show um, but it, is, it, is, is it's it a the... really cool show yeah. it's a lot of fun so I, I would really suggest going and seeing that they do it like four or five times a day yeah. And, and, uh, yeah. and um, there's another new offering this year back there, too, which is the Interactive Tree of Life photo area. Did you guys get to, a chance to check that out? Well, that was there last year as well. Oh, it uh, was? Okay. But, yeah, but the I mean, it, we didn't go over there this year, but I mean, last year we saw it, and it was I mean, it's basically like um, you can put up uh, right next to it, you can put up um, all these memories you have of your family or your loved ones. So you you get to write on a card, you can hang it up, uh, and then take a picture in front of the tree of life. Um, but the new the new offering they are doing this year is they they have the Alabreja masks that you can go and paint. Oh, that's fun. And or you can go and color, I guess, not yeah. paint. And uh, those are all free too, so you can just grab it. I saw one that looked like Dante. I saw one that was like the the winged cat thing that his uh, aunt, aunt had or his grandmother. His, grandma. uh, his grandmother. Grandma. Yeah. Um, so uh, great. Grandma yeah, or something. exactly. So, I mean, it's it's cool that they added a little bit more to it. But and there is a picture opportunity too. they had uh, like wings. So I feel like so when you're done making your mask, you can go take a picture with like the I saw Coco Wall. wings. 
Yeah. I know it's like one of like Rhino's uh, walls. Pictures I know. I was like, what the heck, you guys? I I was in a marketing session, and they're essentially said that there are going to continue to be non-advertised wall photo opportunities popping up from now until whenever so more of like the buzz light year the up and then coco's there was another one on pixar pier um that i saw that was like the the pixar uh ball the luxo ball and they took it it's not there off. anymore yeah no they they take it on and off i don't know why they do it but we went um, a, on Friday a, and it's gone. <laughs> yeah, it's a decal, so yeah, they just, can just. Oh, take it's a it decal. Off. Okay. Well, for the, the record, too, when you tell a group of influencers that this is all happening, that is advertising. But well, just pointing you know out semantics. I, no, no, no. Well, they were saying like minimal advertising on their yeah. part. Essentially, they they have realized now that all they need to rely on is people on Twitter and Instagram. And okay, stuff like so that. only oh, yeah. sixteen Disney Parks blog posts. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, right. Uh, but uh, in the up wall needs some repainting. It's dirty and gross, but whatever. Um, I don't want to put my hand around that balloon. Um, so, <laughs> Katrina, this is a good time. Do you want to show um, one of your things that you got a limited time offering sort of scenario that's back in sure. stock? All right. So it's back in stock. It's the Coco Harito mug. And so the first side is Coco when – or not Coco, but Miguel when his face is painted when he goes to the like the land of the dead. And then on the other side, it just says Coco with like the paper mache in really pretty colors. And this is actually clay. It's not plastic. It's actually pretty good. Twelve ninety nine plus tax, and then you get a drink with it as well. We found this at Cocina. What is it called? Cocina Cucamonga. Cocina Cucamonga. Oh my gosh, my mind went blank. And one per transaction. So yeah. they put a limit on it this time because when they had it during Pixar Fest, it sold out within like the first week. People went crazy for that thing. I, it, it honestly, crazy. to me, if, so if you're listening to this, it looks like those things that if you're from Boston that you put baked beans in. So <laughs> I, it looks cool. I mean, it looks it cool. It's kind of hard to I, hold though. Eli would have liked it. Small. Yeah. It makes me laugh because I was on a cruise in late January. So after Coco had already been out for two months and this was selling inside uh, the Cove Cafe on <laughs> on Cruise so Line. And we, like, Corey and I both looked at him like, hey, you know, it's I haven't seen this before. It might be a cool little souvenir to bring back. And we asked the person who was working there, like, how many have you sold? And she's like, I haven't sold a single one since oh, we've had funny. it here. So Isn't then, that crazy? Uh, yeah. That's the same thing that happened with the gauntlet. The yeah. Over at Disneyland, the, the gauntlet, yeah, the Thanos yeah. gauntlet sold out so fast. And then we went on the cruise and no one was buying them. So yeah. we freaked out and bought like six. I know. It's so <laughs> nuts. So it's like, hey, if you're so looking for something know, that sells out, go to Cruise Line. Go on a cruise. Go on a <laughs> yeah. Disney cruise. Well, it's all the locals, I think. They just are the, they're just like... They hear about these things and they want to grab, you know, as many as they can. But I was honestly super surprised by this mug. I thought it was going to be plastic, so uh, you know, yeah. I think it's the first time I've ever bought a mug at a at a concession stand, or I guess I wouldn't a quick service. I guess I should call it that. Um, had a, a a ceramic mug, so I thought well, it was man. really cool. Yeah. And it comes in a box, so you can't, so it won't break. Oh, that's yeah. good. That's nice. And that's actually a pretty good price then too for that. Yeah, um, and it comes yeah. with a drink. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, I, if you do want to check out a musical celebration of Coco or a uh, video of the overview of the decorations of Cars Land or Brand New Vista Street, you can go over to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash info, and Tyler has put up some videos of that. Um, and I agree, the Miguel marionette is a little bizarre looking because it looks like it's creeping out from under this man's poncho. But um, <laughs> the the adult familia ones look really cool because they're adult size, but then it's this, like this adult guy who's like, poking this kid with sticks in front of him. And I'm like, yeah, what is Dance monkey. Yeah, I'm like, a child, blink twice if you are in danger. Yeah, um, really. <laughs> but yeah, so that is kind of the overview offerings of Halloween stuff at Disney California oh, Adventure. You know yes, what? we haven't spoken about food or drinks yet, but we will. What about oh, I just want to say one last thing. For actually. annual pass holders. Yeah. For annual pass holders. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. The pass holders. California holder Adventure, uh, the, the letters are probably backwards, but it does say Halloween time. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it's Is that a button cool. or a magnet? This, Say that again? What is that? A, a button or a magnet? It's a button. button. Or it's a pin, whatever. whatever button. Yeah, button. Bun, button. And uh, button. so it's pretty cool. It's got it's basically the kind of the oogie boogie that you were talking about at the top of the show with uh, where he's in the commercial basically kind of coming around California Adventure. And we got Creeping this for around. free. 
It's pretty nice, actually. Yeah. Um, so. And then there's a cool picture opportunity over there by Stage 17. Yeah. Do you want to talk about it? Oh, yeah. If you go to the AP... I'm like, which one? <laughs> if you go to the AP Corner, uh, which is where we got this, um, there is a picture opportunity that you can stand in front of basically the same type of sign, and they have a fog machine going, and it's for annual pass holders only. So um, it's kind of cool. But also, um, they're changing the button every week, too, right? Or so, something. Something's different every week, so and I lost it. It was in I, front of me a second ago. I, I, oh. So I think they may have run out of these faster than they anticipated or something, because... Now the I just saw a picture of a purple one that just says AP on it. So it's purple, says AP, and it's much smaller. Um, it's so I think that's going to be the new one that they're going to start giving out here. It's because everyone loves a good piece of flair. They need their pieces of flair. <laughs> their flair. Oh, yeah, you know. Yeah. Tell it to Jennifer Aniston. Um, <laughs> so... Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, if you're an annual pass holder, make sure you're stopping by probably once a week to check out what they have offering over there in the AP corner. I always do love that they do that sort of stuff out there, you know, and that it, it happens so frequently. Um, I did yeah. find the full video of the Oogie Boogie commercial too, and I was like, I just was watching it real cool. Cause Way I think into that cool. commercial. I do love that commercial. I think it's cool. <laughs> I don't know. It looks spooky, and I love it. Um, <laughs> Well, so let's bounce on over to Disneyland Park now, shall we? Um, and um, so there you are greeted with something a little less spooky than bats. But depending on how you perceive the world, it may also creep you out just a little bit because it's giant pumpkins that are like Goofy, Minnie, Donald. Is that it? Or all and five Pluto. Of them? And Pluto's up there too, yeah. And they're all these big old like pumpkin carvings of them on top of the uh, the Disneyland turnstiles. And then you get in the park and uh, you are greeted with the Main Street um, Pumpkin Festival. Is that what it's called? Pumpkin? I, I just lost it. Good Lord. I didn't realize there was a name for it. But yeah, it's basically just jack-o'-lanterns all throughout Main Street. Just in every single window, you'll find some type of jack-o'-lantern. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are, they're not just... Theme to what the building is going to be. Like, you know, the Mad yeah. Hatter has like, That's all what these say. pumpkins. Uh, the Elvis Jack O' Lantern, come on! That by yeah. the music yeah. spot, that guy's he's got there. My favorite is the shaving one, the one who's <gasps> Me too. like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like we so. actually just got a picture of him uh, when we were there, so we'll we'll put that up on this video. Yeah, I'll put that up. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, it's actually really fun because there are there's got to be over a I don't know there's got to be close to 200 or something different Jack O' Lanterns on Main Street, and that's why I say that Disneyland is kind of more uh, a fun-loving Halloween as as opposed to California Adventure spooky Halloween, where it's like, oh, they have all these little jack-o'-lanterns that are kind of goofing around, goofing around. They have all these different faces, like you said, the Elvis one, and and then the colors are just brighter. It's like more orange and yellow as opposed to the dark purple and everything. So, um, reminds me of Halloween Town. Yeah, a little bit. Um, so. Uh, one of my favorite things, and probably the spookiest part of the decorations as well, is if you go into the uh, Fortuosity shop, uh, they have basically made it Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, because you walk in there, and there are birds all over the ceiling, just on every, you know, oh, that's on cool. every chandelier, all that stuff. So I, that's one of my favorite touches, and that's something that you might not even notice unless you go into that shop. Well, mm. you won't notice it unless you go into that shop. So um, it's... To me, that's that's kind of the 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 height, the 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 tall end of it. I don't know how to say it. That's my favorite part of it, I guess. Um, well, we can't get too far out of Main Street without mentioning too that you can also meet some of your favorite characters up here, uh, in their Halloween costumes that have changed from the 20s and 30s of Buena Vista Street into modern day we'll say i don't know um yeah, a so, little more modern for sure yeah yeah, yeah. I, I i like them too these are their costumes recently went through an update so they're not this like uh, they i think these are fairly new I mean, they've been they've Donald's been around been for a little while yeah. um but but i mean yeah donald duck has a little pumpkin around him uh like mickey's, mickey's the vampire yeah. right yeah, Mickey's a vampire. Uh, Minnie is a witch, and sure my favorite is. one is Goofy. He's a skeleton, but the best part is that even his hat has a bone on it. So it's like he somehow found a hat that has a bone. Uh, that's, you know, I just think it's pretty funny. Um, he made it's a it. nice little goofy touch. He He's a cosplayer. It's made out of uh, Claire Bell's original husband. <laughs> I don't know. That got dark. Sorry, that took a twist real quick. Um, yeah, so you, you've got all those. You've got the, the colorful the, the um, buntings and everything that are all around there. 
Um, and the big pumpkin. We can't forget about the oh, big, the big uh, Mickey old pumpkin. Giant pumpkin. Yeah. Yep. It's you hard know what to I miss. would love? I would love it if our website had a picture of that pumpkin straight ahead and not from the side. So um, I see that you have one in this video that looks very nice. So that's why I'm just saying, like, that's not your <laughs> that's not your issue. I'm just being passive aggressive. I do have um, a picture of it if you guys need it. I was able to, like, stand in line and say I don't need a picture with the pumpkin. I just need a picture of the pumpkin I think on. it's a great photo op. I love that big giant pumpkin. Yeah. Yeah, and that's one of the things that you will continually see a line for like all day long. So if you really want to get a photo of it and you notice that there aren't that many people there, go and grab one because who knows the next time it's going to be like a 30 minute wait to to grab a picture with that giant Mickey Jack lantern. So I saw so. I, I saw too that they were offering some new um balloons this year, some villain balloons this year that were look pretty cool, a little spooky yeah. there. Uh, and no. I, can't t- I, I honestly couldn't tell if they have two types or if there's just two, no, there's like there's two the sides, yeah. right? So one of the sides has like uh, Ursula very prominent in the front and the other side has the, uh, what's her name, Maleficent? Uh, very, or is it the Evil Queen? Either one of those. Um, but, you know. I was trying to it, get a picture because I was like, I forgot. Yeah, but they, they are really cool balloons and they light up at night. They're very green and uh, they have green light on the inside of them too. So they are pretty neat. A uh, new little Halloween balloon. Um, so there is another area of the park that is um, reflects Halloween as well. Well, not Halloween, excuse me. That reflects a seasonal change as well. Um, that was rude of me to say Halloween. Uh, the uh, Dia de los Muertos area of, um, I always say the name. Frontierland? Yeah. Rancho well, I was going to say ran- Ranchero Zocalo. Oh, Rancho del Zocalo. Rancho del Zocalo. That's it. Um, that area. Um, does that change every year? Or does it look the same this year? Or what? Can you tell me about that a little bit? Yeah. So uh, it, it's pretty much the same this year. They do have uh, a couple traditions that they do. One of them is the uh, – it's basically – a paper mache uh, kind of display of a bunch of different skeletons, uh, and that's been there for years. And they're kind of having a party, you know, they're out for Dia de los Muertos, like you were mentioning. And then the other thing that they do that's been a staple for many years now is right across from there, they actually put a bunch of lights on one of the trees, and they call it the Halloween tree. And there's actually a little plaque you can go read about it so down there. Ray Bradbury tree, yeah. Say that again, sorry. Uh, it's Ray Bradbury's tree. The, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you can go and read about it. And I've, I'm, I haven't read it since last year, truthfully. So I'm trying to I'm blanking on the details. But um, it, it's it's a really cool little tradition that they do. And it's and it's fun to see every year. Um, but yeah, other than so, I think other than those I two did, things, I didn't don't... know uh, that one of the um, the the figures in the uh, Dia de los Muertos area was La Catrina. And now that I know that, I need to go get a picture of it and come back because La Catrina is essentially like a uh, Zorro type hero, uh, pr- but people to like Mexico. I, I believe had to... it's the Katrina. Pronoun- and she's yes. right there. <laughs> the Katrina. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> La Catrina. There she is. Uh, there was a Spanish telenueva, uh, or however you telenovela. I don't, yeah. Uh, telenueva would be the nine. But, um, but yeah, that we had to watch in school when we were learning Spanish about a girl named Jamie who went to Mexico. And um, turns out she was l- related to La Catrina who was trying to help the La Hacienda de La Caranda. Um, anyway, Ooh. regardless, but that I am, I did not know La Catrina was a real person <laughs> until just this moment. So. I did not know that either. No, so I'm gonna have to go revisit this area. But um, so yeah, so that is not uh, that is not the only area that's decorated special for this holiday because this other place has an attraction overlay that goes along with it, and I was one of the main reasons I took a trip there. Um, it was my second trip to Disneyland ever, and I was like, I'm going because I need to see the Haunted Mansion Holiday. So um, walk us through the Haunted Mansion holiday. Explain to us what happens for that. Explain it. I mean, I can do it if you want. Yeah, I can do it if you want. Uh, Haunted Mansion holiday is basically uh, Jack Skellington. He has taken over the entire thing. He's decked the halls. And it's it, it really is more of a, a celebration of Halloween and Christmas, you know, a lot like the movie is. So he comes in, there's a, uh, and he just puts in decorations all over the place. Every single room is completely different, kind of unrecognizable in, in a lot of cases, actually, where you're, like, shocked how much they can do in yeah. such a small amount of time. 
uh, to the point where like the endless hallway has zero in down it. Oh, uh, I you love that. Yeah. The candelabra. Yeah. You can see zero, zero in the in the attic on the outside as well, floating around out there. If you stand back, he's in the tippy top. Like you can see the nose going around in a circle out there. In Just, the attic? Yeah. I'd have to, yeah, yeah. I'd have to when you like stand outside, I I guess it would be called the attic. It's like the peak of the house, the very tippy top. Yeah. Like you, if you watch it, you can actually see there's a Zorro that's going around out there inside. A Zorro or a Zero? A Zero. I have said Zorro <laughs> several times now because I can't stop thinking about La Katrina. So, um, no, but I, I agree with you guys. Like this, this is for somebody who has never been to Disneyland or maybe you've been and it was only just the regular Haunted Mansion attraction. It When you say attraction overlay, this is not like when they shut the lights off on Space Mountain and call it an overlay. This is like a whole new attraction. It is telling a whole new story. And I'm, Craig, I'm curious because I know you have very distinct feelings about The Nightmare Before Christmas, about mm-hmm. how you can only watch it one day a year, two days a year, right? Well, no, I I joke around with that. Technically, I don't consider The Nightmare Before Christmas a Halloween movie. It starts after Halloween's over. That's when they start singing the song. They just ramp, wrapped up Halloween, and now they're gearing up for Christmas in it. So, yes, it's this is Halloween, but... That's it's, the opening number that's, because it's, that's the yeah, day. Yeah, it's over after yeah. that. It is then fully a Christmas movie, and I I see this as a Christmas attraction. So I'm I'm glad it is around for longer. It is for there for Halloween because well, it it makes no sense for them to just put it up for like two months and take it down. So having having four months of it is is better than nothing. That being said, though, it's like. Halloween time is the one time a year where the Haunted Mansion makes the most sense in a grand scheme. <laughs> it is haunted. It's spooky. It's it's, and so then to put Christmas into it, it kind of takes you, you out of it a little bit more. But that's just my feelings on it in terms of enjoying it. Um, it's it's superior to the Haunted Mansion, uh, Haunted Mansion Holiday. I would... I would rather do that a hundred times over. The Haunted than, Mansion Holiday? Yeah, okay. than just the regular Haunted Mansion out there by itself. I, I love Haunted Mansion Holiday so much, but um, yeah, in terms of a Halloween time offering, it does not make as much sense to me. Uh, you know, you do make a valid point. You do make some valid points in there. Um, it's, it's like the exterior represents the Halloween side of the story and the interior represents the Christmas part of the story. Yeah, in even the, the exterior is very, very much Christmas. It's all what? Christmas. It's all pumpkins. It's very well, Christmas. Well, he has like a Christmas list and stuff on the outside and there's yeah. like a sleigh that he built oh, on the outside God. of the mansion. All right, all right, all right, all right. But it gets me excited for Christmas because I go in and I'm like, oh my gosh, just drive. I, 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 I'll I, agree I, with that. Yeah, yes. I, I will <laughs> say though, like it is really, and this, what's unique about this attraction is there's a lot of really um, like stuff changing changes every year it's never the same twice like right. kind of thing like they added a sally animatronic um a couple, a years, couple ago. years back and then um it's just it's really really impressive there's the monkey bride that moves around and you're supposed to try and find it every year and then the the well, gingerbread on the table changes too yeah and the gingerbread house is always amazing like that's the coolest gingerbread house you'll ever see in your life uh because it's like animated and it has and it's huge it's super tall this year, it's a house with like a spider on it, and uh, it's it is really cool to see. And my favorite thing about it is you can actually smell it as you're going by. They pump in gingerbread smell, and it's one of those really cool little touches that you're always excited to see every year that they uh, open up this this haunted mansion holiday. Yeah, and so. if you if you have never seen it and you don't think you're going out to Disneyland, um, you know, uh, or you're going to miss it. Um, be sure to go to youtube.com slash wwinfo and we've got ride throughs of that over the years too. And check it out. You can compare and contrast some of them. Um, some of the differences, if you can see it in the camera quality, it hasn't been as amazing over the years. We have really good cameras right now, but we didn't always. Um, but there is one more area of the park that does get a little bit of a Halloween love and in, 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 in expect, an unexpected way to, I think, the most kind of off the wall thing that I had never heard about until I went there and and that was a uh, haunted uh, space mountain ghost galaxy and I was just like what <laughs> because <laughs> it seems like such a weird thing but it, it at the same time is so cool so the haunted Ma- uh, the haunted mansion jeez louise uh the the space mountain out there is a little different structured differently than ours and it's it's a side by side attraction but it also um 
it has uh, the ability for a lot more projections on there. That's how they're able to do um, the Star Wars overlay, the Ghost Galaxy overlay and whatnot. But um, I I dig it. Craig, I know you like this too. Because <laughs> my thing was I was like, you know, ghosts can exist but not in outer space. And then I was like, well, I guess they can because how would I know? But what do you, what do you <laughs> I think? Don't, I don't want to say I like this. I always enjoy Disneyland's space mountain i yeah. think it's unique i think it's it's definitely it's definitely an all-around great attraction because of the great on-ride audio and just the track itself i am not in love with ghost galaxy i i i'm glad that they do change it up but for me like if it's regular space mountain i will ride it two or three times a trip if it is Hyperspace Mountain. Hyperspace I am a huge Star Wars fan. I would be content riding it once an hour <laughs> for the entire time I'm there. With That's Ghost Galaxy, I know, but I love I love Hyperspace <laughs> Mountain so much. Yeah, uh, me too. Ghost Galaxy. I'm good riding it once, and it's like, okay, that's that's it. I think it actually takes away. Were well, you like What's from the spooky face coming at me? You well, know, <laughs> yeah, it just it kind of takes away from the entire ambience of the ride in general. So I think it's a stronger attraction without the overlay than than with it. But I would never say to anyone, well, s- skip it because it's not great. See it once, but hope for hope for regular Space Mountain or hyperspace to come back. Yeah, and I would say for me, I, I kind of agree with you, Craig, but to me what kills it is the music, actually. I don't think the music is that great because it sounds like, I don't know, a kind of corny Space Pirates song or something like that. Um, but, but I mean, there are just so many great effects. Like when you go up the lift hill, and I, I don't even want to spoil it, actually, but when you go up the lift hill, the projections that you see at that moment are just like, uh, especially if you're not expecting it, is really cool. Uh, and and it always makes me smile, the very beginning of that ride. Uh, I, I think it would be a lot better if it had better music, actually. I wish so. I could just plug in Monsters After Dark yeah. for that. Because <laughs> it would That's still you fit. Put your, uh, put your AirPods on listening to Monsters After Dark, because it's on Spotify and Apple Music, and you can, you can just ride Ghost Galaxy like that. Make it a whole new experience for yourself, but... I am also realizing as we're finishing up this Disneyland part of it, I forgot to talk about that you could meet um, Vampira, uh, Vam- Vampirina. Vampirina, not Vampirina. Vampira. She is not there, um, but Vampirina um, uh, at uh, a Disney California Adventure. It's one of the new offerings this year. I know you're like, who is that? You might have children and watch this show, so you'd probably know it's a it's a Disney Junior character. She, she's Goth Doc McStuffins. Goth Doc McStuffins. Yeah, she's yeah. Um, she's Doc, Mc, Doc McStuffin's like creation on the loose or something, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that, that's what Disneyland resort has to offer or Disneyland, uh, park, excuse me, has to offer in terms of like regular non-paid events. Now, um, you do have an extra hard ticket event. Um, there is, uh, there, before I get into the Halloween party, there is also the, uh, happiest haunts, um, tour, which is, um, an extra charge. It's $85 a person, um, and then there's annual pass discounts and stuff. But that's a 90-minute tour that takes you behind the screams of the Haunted Mansion, discussing some of the mysteries and secrets behind the popular attraction. And you get a fast pass for Haunted Mansion Holiday. Um, <laughs> what? That's such a waste. No one ever gets fast passes for that. You can almost always get it for like 10 minutes before your time comes to ride it. Oh, for oh. Haunted Mansion Holiday? Oh, yeah, no, I, I had to wait an hour once for that. Oh, then yeah. you're not I mean, I got, a, I got a fast pass too, but... Yeah, we showed up at 11, and the fast passes were not until 5.30 p.m. Maybe later in the season. Well, it's I also the beginning, that. I was going to say. Yeah. You guys were there the first yeah. weekend. so. Um, but, yeah, I, I do agree that the Happiest Haunts tour for $85, which you're not far off from, like, getting another ticket, another day added onto your ticket there, um, seems like a lot. But, hey, whatever. If you've done it all, and you might want to do more then. You guys are just watching me, huh? It's just oh, you guys. Sorry, I forgot you were talking. <laughs> I didn't realize it because I was looking down. But um, no, so um, let me see. There's that. You've got the costume characters. We'll talk about the food really quickly because we already talked about it in another episode. But um, then you get to Mickey's Halloween party, um, which varies in price and days and stuff like that. Um, you can check out all that info on www.info.com. But um, your Halloween party is a little bit different than Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween party. Um, well, 
I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to interject in this, but shouldn't we probably wait and talk more about this when <gasps> you know we what? actually we talk should. about it with we Tyler should. and Katrina? I think that's a good point. How about we, we save this part for when <laughs> you experience it? Like we are going to be going to the party on September nineteenth, so we will have a full report for everybody uh, right after we do that, and yeah. a big bag of candy. Yeah. I think that's the best method. So we'll get we'll tease you here. Okay, yeah, we'll tease you. It is they do have a Halloween party out there. It is a little bit different than ours. Um, we there is uh, maybe we'll see we'll see what they have to say about it when they come back. What the parade looks like this year and and whatnot. Um, but uh, just real quick before we we before we finish up here, obviously D- Disneyland Resort I feel like is known for their featured food and beverage options that they do for events, especially in years of late. They have just like really been knocking it out of the park with all their sort of stuff. And I did speak about some things that I'm really excited about for the season, and I just want to talk about them again really quick, um, just because you know they're part of the offerings and this is a Halloween kind of thing, but it seems like churros is the name of the game at Disneyland resort lately. Does it not? Do you guys feel like that? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm getting kind of bored with it. I yeah, don't, well. I don't want to be negative about it, but I, I think it's interesting, but it's just so overpriced. Well, sometimes really... too, I feel like they're just throwing colored sugar on it and they're like, ah, that's a yeah, new churro. Yeah. And I'm like, mm, but it's not cinnamon sugar and you just ruined it. But, um, well, and but, some of them too, like when we had when we when we ate them all for Pixar Fest, it was like one of them was like they're charging you an extra like dollar fifty, and all they did was put like a little bit of frosting on the tip, and then some like cocoa crispies. Yeah, and they and they called it ants on a log, and it was like uh, this is not worth a dollar fifty extra. Like it it just was kind of a to me, churros are very cheap for them to produce. And this is like an easy thing for them to make. Well, a lot of money I'm not going to lie. There are some in this list that do seem appealing to me. Like there, there's a sour apple churro with um, an optional add on caramel sauce. That sounds interesting. The one that I most want to try is the pumpkin spice churro with cream cheese frosting. You got me at that pumpkin spice. Um, <laughs> there's like a uh, <laughs> well, considering. <laughs> Considering pumpkin spice is usually like a pumpkin cinnamon. pie spice and cinnamon, Shut up. it's probably going to taste like a churro. Yeah, but you know what it sounds like? The <laughs> carrot cake one. And there is no denying that carrot cake one is uh, delicious. It, it sounded like the carrot cake one. That's exactly what I was yeah. going to say. Um, there's the churro sundae with cookie butter gelato garnished with a cinnamon sugar dusted churro and topped with a word I don't know and whipped cream. Kajita. <laughs> C- I, uh, C- I, oh, I don't know. What is it? Oh, I don't know what that is. Kajeta? Anyway, these look... What did you say? Cajeta, maybe? Because it has a J, maybe? If, like, Spanish? So is it a soft J? I don't know. Take me back to La Catrina, and she'll tell me. The, the tele, <laughs> telenovela that taught me to speak Spanish that I can't remember today, unfortunately. Um... No, but I mean, there's there's like what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's like twelve listed in this article alone, of like churro areas. But then you've got your typical like Halloween treats I, that you can go into like the bakeries and stuff and get like the, uh, you know, they love those cake pops. They love those. They cake do. Pops. Another cash grab. Well, and then I my thing is like I don't always love them, but I know people do love them. The uh, candied apples. You're, you look yeah, like you want I to will, say something about it. I will say I wasn't always sold on the cake pops, but Kylie insisted. I well, I insisted pops. because I got very angry with her towards the end of our last trip out there. Um, and she had talked about wanting the Doug cake pop the entire time. So on the last night <laughs> with Tyler and Katrina, I essentially forced her into getting it. After we're getting she, a cake pop. I don't, I don't need it. I don't need it. No, we're getting it. And we forgot about it. And... Almost, I think it was about a week and a half later. We're like, oh, well, this is going to be awful. It but was you still, still you it. it was still perfect. Oh I, my gosh. I can't, I can't yeah, believe you it ate was, it. It was perfect. No, and it was like, I was like, oh, this is going to be bad. So that is one of the things I have to recommend is if you want a treat that can, that feels like can homemade stand and the fresh, test of time. but can stand the <laughs> test of time, the Disneyland cake pops, they're, they're rocking it there. It's like, I, I it's like a, I think they're pretty good. I think they're just kind of expensive. And really what you're paying for more than anything to me is the art that goes into it. You're paying for the, the photo op. pastry chefs. Yeah. It's a good Instagram worthy photo. Cause yeah. I mean the, that like. The one that uh, Kylie wanted, that was an adorable cake pop. Yeah. And that's a cute picture opportunity. 
Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm all, we're all about those Instagram photos. She know. I don't think we took a picture of it, though. Oh, well, you're terrible. <laughs> we just made it. Um, <laughs> well, there's other, I mean, there's like stuff like the, there's pumpkin spice beignets. There's a black rose dessert at Red Rose Tavern, which is like black truffle mousse with raspberry compote, compote and crunch center with a candy spider. Ooh, spooky. Um... There's just like the frozen abuelita. Uh, ab- sorry. sorry, that never happens. Abuelita horchata. You've thrown me off now. Um, the worms and dirt. Oh my gosh, there's just so much. I really, really, really want to try. Um, there is uh, pumpkin spice bread pudding, and it's not all pumpkin spice flavored, so everyone get off my case about loving pumpkin spice too much. But um, I mean, this list goes on and on, and it is available. These things are available at both parks. Craig, here's something for you. Refreshment Corner, there's a Halloween hot dog. It's got spicy meatballs with a cheese sauce and oven-roasted tomatoes. I don't do Refreshment Corner. It's just a knockoff Casey's. Okay. Well, Craig and I will be doing a jalapeno hot dog. Refreshment Corner was first, so. Yeah, but Casey's does hot dogs that better. Spooky sound. I, I, can, I will give you that. I don't, I don't know. I don't eat there at either of them. But I do want to talk about the things that we did eat. Yes, quick. please tell me. Um, uh, so over at the Carpe Circle Lounge this year, they had a couple little Halloween things. They have their seasonal flatbread that changes all the time, uh, which isn't really a Halloween thing, but I just wanted to mention it because it's different now. And they also have a poison apple teeny, which comes with this little flashy purple guy. Check that out. It's a, it's a little poison apple that you can uh, then take home afterwards. It's basically an alcoholic beverage with... Uh, Seventeen dollars. It was seventeen dollars, yeah, and it and it was uh, wait, Crown what Royal was $17? Apple Sour. So, sorry, say that again. What was seventeen dollars? The poison apple teeny. Jeez. So, okay. Did well, you get it? It's glow because cube? it comes with this little glowy cube oh, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I missed but, it for a second. Sorry, I was reading more food items. No, it's all good. Um, so the it has Crown Royal apple. It has sour apple, sour apple pucker. Uh, some cranberry juice and some bitters, and they shake it all up and put it in a cup, and uh, it's pretty good. But, I mean, you can get these glow cubes at different places in the park, but Carte Circle Lounge is the only place you can get the purple one. So it, that's a new thing this year, the purple one. And then the other new thing that I tried this year at the Carte Circle Lounge was witch's fingers, which were basically uh, pretzel sticks, like fresh pretzel sticks with little almond fingernails. Mm-hmm. So... They were actually, like, when they put it in the cup and everything, it's actually a very spooky-looking uh, kind of snack. And it came with this really tasty uh, pumpkin mustard. And mm, it was a warm really? pumpkin mustard. Interesting. So, so yeah. And, and so when I heard that, I was like, pumpkin mustard? I'm not so sure about that. But actually, the flavors really came together. And it makes it, – and it's not – it's not necessarily like a pumpkin spice flavor, it, but it, you can just taste the pumpkin, and then you taste a little bit of mustard as well. Like I don't know if you guys have ever had like a kind of a like a pumpkin soup, like you know during the fall or whatever. But mm-hmm. it kind of reminded me like of a creamy pumpkin soup type of thing. But to me, I thought it was really good. That was uh, thirteen dollars, I want to say. So it was a little a little bit pricey, but um, like a lot of the things in the lounge are kind of pricey. So. Uh, I really enjoyed that, and we're going to have a vlog coming out of um, where we uh, discuss this stuff as well, so I will put a link to the show notes in that for you guys. So uh, those are the those are really the two Halloween treats that we tried so yeah, far. I mean, I did try the the seasonal pumpkin cider as well, and that was okay. I did not taste pumpkin. I just tasted apple. Yeah, that's not exclusive to the Disneyland Resort, though, that's... Uh, as far as I know, but but well, I'm just it, it it's on the list of the Halloween treats yeah, and drinks yeah, and stuff, and yeah. they have the Oktoberfest back from Carl Strauss. So, it yeah, it's good overall. Yeah, I, I like I do. So I know we said a lot of pumpkin oriented stuff, but there is a lot of like stuff that's highlighting Oktoberfest and other things that are happening that year as well. Uh, that year, this time of year as well. Um, the they got the black. Uh, cone the the mac and cheese cone at um right. the cozy cone area too with the spicy mac and cheese i liked that i like yeah that was good oh, last year my stomach is like growling at me right now so there's that sort of stuff and then there's also um the collectible merchandise as well we already talked about that on the show too you've got your oogie boogie popcorn bucket you've got a new neon oogie boogie popcorn bucket you've got the um cauldron the bubbling cauldron popcorn bucket and uh is that it or is there another one 
the for the popcorn bucket. Then there's like a like a the refillable one for Disney California Adventure that has like Oogie Boogie and yeah, stuff that one on the was background. Cute. Yeah, I liked that one. We have that as well. And then the Disneyland one has a similar popcorn bucket, I want to say as well. There's two of the refillable ones and everything else is not refillable. Yeah. I like this. Um, and then what else is there? Oh, the the straw, the plastic straw, the headless horseman. Mm -hmm. like it's straw? like the clip, right? It, I like yeah. that now that they do the clips because you can like put that on a bag or something when you're done. You know? And then they also have in Cars Land, they have the pumpkin. It's a jack-o'-lantern, but mm -hmm. it's made out of a tire. So. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Craig got one yeah. of those last year, I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are they doing the uh, the cups again? The cones, you can get the cone and decorate it with the stickers. Did you guys see that or not? Oh, you know, I haven't heard anything about that, so I'm not sure they are. I, I don't just, I was just no, thinking about but... that right now. But um, Well, there's a lot of that stuff, you know, and then, of course, there's the seasonal Halloween merchandise as well that comes out, and there's a ton of that this year as well. So, um, But I, I don't know. I uh, Anything else uh, you guys can think of that we didn't talk about? No, I think right. just to wrap up, it's it. it's uh, what I think we like, covered it. Yeah, we covered yeah. it. But just to wrap up, it's like this is kind of one of those times of year when you kind of want to visit Disneyland Resort because there is so much to see that isn't out all the time. So it's a really cool time of year to come and visit. And uh, I, I think it really brings us into the fall. I'm excited for it to cool down a little bit out here. So. Yeah, yeah, well, lucky you, because it's still 92 degrees every day here and raining. Oh, it's still hot over here right now. So. Ugh um well good okay well and then when uh um <laughs> when are you uh going to the halloween party did you say on the 14th the 19th of 19th. september 19th okay so this episode starts. comes out on the 17th so it'll be after uh, that yeah. but we will we will talk about your halloween adventures after that i'm assuming you'll be in costume oh well now we'll i'm gonna be to, dressing right? up as la katrina <laughs> it's just a shirt yeah. that says la on it yeah <laughs> we haven't thought about costumes yet truthfully but uh i think that uh that maybe we need to now that you've said that all right well thank you guys for joining us for this episode you you guys specifically the two i'm talking to in california katrina and tyler <laughs> and craig as always and all of you out there listening and watching this as well um you know uh if you're watching this on itunes and you want to subscribe to the channel for other content please feel free to do so we would like that and um if you are on itunes rate and uh, review us subscribe to the the feed as well um but that will do it for this episode of the disneyland edition of the Diz unplugged we'll be back next week with another episode so till then take care everybody have a good week